trip. That's a low on heart. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the low on heart. Now, she is a tier six German, um, I want to say carrier, but feels like battle carrier in a sense. Uh, her secondaries are very nice. Um, good damage on them, good reach and everything. And I kind of, after playing it, what was it, yesterday, two days ago, kind of want to go back and spike it more for secondaries and stuff. She's one of the, um, one of the, the few carriers where, where it's a really good pick to do that. Some of the other German carriers are as well. So, um, her, she's got AP rocket planes. These are tier eight rocket planes at tier six. So that's kind of sexy. She's got a dive bomber squadron that essentially drops midway bombs, which does a lot of damage if they hit. That's a big if. And then torpedo bombers are extremely slow. They're really only good at hitting slow battleships or things that maybe are stuck or AFK. Um, so that's that's the low one heart, frankly. Not a bad ship. Did I miss anything, guys? Alright. Nope. Let's talk about uh, Big O's build then. So, Big O brought uh, air boost modification 1 for planes to come back quicker, um, engine boost duration, secondary range, and bombers modification 2. Now, this is very handy for uh, the, the, the single bomber drop squadron. Um, it's useful. I might instead go for the attack aircraft HP just to make it so that your rocket planes survive longer to go in and do the drops against cruisers. Um, most of the time you're going to use your bombers against destroyers that don't have a lot of anti-air anyways. So I might make that change. Runty, what do you think? Uh, I would take the attack. Yeah. No, actually, what do I have here? Torpedoes could be no, a possibility, too. I have the bombers. I have the bombers. You do have the bombers. Have the bombers. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Because the bombers is what needs to get directly over the ship, and they have a long reload cooldown, so you want to... Um... Okay. It takes longer to get over a target. Fine. Fair enough. Uh, for captains, I'm going to assume that he's running loot yens. Why wouldn't you run loot yens? Loot yens is a fantastic choice for carriers. You get enough hits, and then you get a reload uh, buff to plane reload. Um, also, of course, there's the secondaries, and then it's probably not going to happen, but if you spot three ships, you get a heal. So it's not. It's going to happen, but not so much to where you need it to happen. So, but anyways, it's good to have. So you've gone uh, air supremacy, and then secondary armament. Oh, okay. Interesting. Most people go for the squadron speed, but okay. Uh, continuous armor, and then HP survivability expert, yeah. He did the anti flak He did the secondary shell dispersion and range. Ah, he did Hidden Menace. So Hidden Menace allows him to play a lot closer to the enemy. Okay. No, not big old playing a capping CV? I know, right? That seems weird. Most people are probably going to go with improved engines and possibly also repair specialists, or at least improved engines and maybe the engine boost and then whichever one, techie or last gasp. But they go once hit menace. Okay. You could also go for a bomber flight control. Yeah, I, pro I might go. So bad here on this ship. Why is that? Because you lose your planes on the way back. Because it takes longer for your planes to get to a safe uh, altitude, right? Yeah. And the return speed is is nerfed by twenty by fifty percent too. So really, the only way for head menace like to be counter essentially is to be playing a lot closer to the enemy than most carriers want to be. But Big O wants to do that because he wants to get a secondary in range. So this is all like super big brain built. Okay. 
for flags, ramming flag, um, both fire chance, and then secondaries. I'm surprised you didn't take ship speed and flooding reduction. Those two I might have taken. Anti-air, if you're going to be up close and personal, might as well use your anti-air. Those are other ones that could be useful. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into your replay then. This is a middle tier game. Sixes, sevens, and fives. Don't have a lot to worry about at two six, right? Dorigo, Mutsuki, you don't care about. Mayhem, you also probably don't care about. Cruisers, you don't care about. Battleships, you really don't even care about. Just... Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, you found the rear jail, of course. Go figure. Lane's out right in front of him. Is he... If your fighters latch, that's huge for early game. Oh, looks like they latched. And there's the man. Yep, they latched. All right. So you got some easy uh, clean kills there. One hit. One hit. Look at how much damage that one hit did. Wow. And you're looping back around, you're going to get a second drop on the Mayhem. And... Oh! Another big hit there. It causes a sticky fire because he DCP'd the first one. And you put the planes up again because you want to try to kill this man if he doesn't burn out. I like it. Makes perfect sense. Mitsuki, but you don't care about him because you want this mayhem. I like this actually. Focus on getting the destroyers out, especially the top tier destroyers. This is good. You're going to lose a lot of planes to do this, though. You're only going to get one drop in. Better hope it's a winner. Oh, you got him. Now you're on to your torpedo bombers. I probably would have gotten rockets here to try to rocket the Argentina. But I'm guessing you're going to try to torpedo bomb the Leon. Uh, you're going to pre-drop. Okay, pre-drop makes sense. Get those planes back to the carrier so that they're ready to go for the next one. Replay bug. Probably replay bug because you hit with two torpedoes and that did not look right. The uh, replays for carriers does have a bit of a weird thing with the carrier UI, so take a lot of the drop angles and stuff at, at a slight grain of salt. Planes out to try to spot things behind. Oh, there's the Argentina. There you go. Now he's broadside, so you can just go right in. I might even use reload boost, or, or, or engine boost, you did that. This is a dead Argentina right here. Or not. Only one Citadel. He was slightly angled. Back to the yeah, bombs. You're going to go for the Mutsuki now? Drop angle was not very good here. No. I usually don't like using the rockets if the target isn't spotted already when I launch them. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of got lucky that the Argentina got spotted himself anywhere there. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Good 
song choice by them. Whoever's playing DJ. Doc Green, is that you? Oh, Mutsuki detected. And now, little one, you will die. Nice hit there, causing a fire. Probably gonna force the DCP. Nope, he doesn't. The ironic thing is, he's dead anyways. Even if you miss, your teammates will probably kill him. Yep. Oh, he detonates. I'm not sure if that is from Playbot, but that radical beam that super massive uh, there. Did look a little weird. Now, I will say this too. Um, I'm not seeing much use out of your hidden menace skill. I was expecting you, in traditional big old fashion, to be like really up close and personal, using all your secondaries yeah. and having like three or four close quarters experts. Hasn't happened. Yeah, look, so how, look, he's only down to four rocket planes total. And part of that is because he lost so many on the way back up when he was going for the drop on the Argentina. Right. Right. And I think that's the problem with Hidden Menace. It's such a situational skill. You're better off picking skills that you're always going to use. I think it's just it's just straight up bad. Like what what they did with that oh yeah, the bomb killers need less height to, to get to safe distance to compensate mm. for that slower descent. That only works if they go above the ship that they are dropping, and if that's the only ship. But right. if there is another ship within, like, let's say, like, three and a half kilometers away that can shoot flak at the bombers while they are sent, that flak is always gonna hit because your planes are so slow. Right. Nice hit on the Nuremberg, by the way. Planes. Right, so it's it, like... It doesn't make a difference if you attack a solo ship, but if anything is close by that has flak, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. In which case, you need to be doing more pre-dropping. I mean, you're still gonna guarantee, more or less guaranteed to lose the planes which you actually attack with, which I'm right. not guaranteed if you don't have the skill. But, but that's why I'm saying you need to pre-drop more so that you have fewer you, planes that aren't in yeah. the attack, but then die later when he recalls. True, but you, you wouldn't even need to lose the planes that on the recall if you didn't have the skill. Okay. Like, I now really you, don't like it. Use the bombers there. I might have, if I'm using bombers there, I might have gone to the other flank to try to hunt the remaining enemy destroyer. Uh, your drop on the Leon is fine, but you didn't. You just you just damaged it. That's it. You know. I might have pre-dropped, by the way, ahead of time here. I highly doubt you're going to be able to get more than one strike off here. You're up against a Leon, pretty good anti-air, and then there's a Texas yeah. behind you. You also only need one right. drop on the Leon. Like, look at this, you lost two planes in the process of the attack. Mm -hmm. You're gonna lose both of them that go up. And, yeah, it's just three planes lost for... Right. Like nothing and two that got the attack off right so that's where you know again if you want to use that um whatever it's called skill you you, you need to pre-drop more rockets just don't, use, just don't use the skill okay rockets are good if you're going to go up to the the nuremberg but leon and texas are forming voltron right now i'd stay away from that that's a that's a very nasty anti-air bubble just let your team get the kill. It don't, doesn't matter. Uh, good old Voltron. Mm-hmm. Watch the little baby lions make one big lion. Yes, that's right. Small lions make one big lion. Rawr! I used to love watching that show. Now with the cyclone on, a little bit harder for you to spot things, but it's also easier for you to get in the range, and you're already moving your carrier into the Texas's range. Oh, there you go, and you got yourself a passive heal from all the spotting, but it, again, doesn't help you right now. You can't afford to take too much hit point damage here with the planes. 
the turn in a little bit earlier than I expected, but for whatever reason, the Nuremberg doesn't seem to care. So, bye. Obligatory exploding in this. That was now, very, very close to even get the drop off before right? go up again. Yeah, again, could be a replay bug, but anyway. Now get in position to, um, to secondary the, the Texas. I might have used torpedo bombers, but dive bombers to try to clear away anti-air is a possibility, I suppose. I don't think he has much torpedo bombers left. He's got five available. I see against the Texas here, your bombers are fine. They just get away after the drop, no problem, because he's alone and there's no flag. And also, yeah, also because Texas is more mid and short range anti-air than long range. It doesn't have long range. Exactly. Frankly. And I like how you're just sitting here to watch your secondaries do the thing. That's, that's fun. Still, game isn't won just yet. But yeah, man, we're, we're, we're 11 minutes in and there's no full squadrons anymore. Mm hmm Everything about Which Lugians is... not a big problem in this game because mm -hmm. your team is winning so hard. Anything about Lugians is you actually want to spam your rockets as much as possible if you can because you want to get as many ribbons as possible because when you get enough ribbons, that's when you proc Lugians' plane regeneration buff which helps you in the long game. Yeah. You don't have that many rockets on the... True. Eh, it's okay. It's okay on the Lunar. You can... You can proc it rather easily. I'm just saying, like, if he had proc it now, I mean, I get that he used the bombers on the destroyers. That's what I would do, too. The problem is, like, if you use the rockets so early, when all the mm. ships are still come together, you're right. most likely gonna lose all of them, and then you don't have any left for the end. Completely agree. Now, your planes were detected when you went over the repulses uh, and subs last known, and, and that's it. I would have turned northward. Yep, there's the repulse. But you're gonna head down towards where you know the enemy carrier is, all right, I might pre-drop if you plan on going for the carrier. Yeah, so he has fighters up too. There's no way you're getting a second attack off. Right. So that's three planes, two at least two planes that are just going to die here. Just so you can get I one torpedo hit. I think that's all planes gone. Yep. So there's, okay, there's the proc. Aircraft prep time reduced. So that's going to help you uh, to get get your planes up again. Now you're pre-dropping. I wouldn't pre-drop here because look at your score. You're going to win anyways. There's no point in wasting your time dropping planes now. Otherwise, I agree with the idea. You're kind of, you're kind of fortunate that this team is winning so hard. If right? this game would go the distance, you, you'd have a problem with play management. If, especially if it was a more even game, right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the post-battle results screens. So, 80,000 damage, not bad. You killed three ships. These are destroyers. I would expect your base uh, XP to be pretty high. First place, your King George came in with zero. Good job, King George. Okay, nice. Well done. Well done indeed. So, you lost 43 planes. 34 non-fighters, essentially. That, that's a lot for 30 minutes. It's a good amount for 13 minutes. I agree completely. So, okay. And there's your credits and XP's. Not bad. All right, well, let's take a look at your replay render. I don't know if there's that much else to talk about. We kind of hit it. I, I, I don't feel like Hidden Menace was useful this game. I think it actually hurt him more than helped him. It will hurt you 9 out of 10 games. Mm-hmm. 
The cyclone helped, though. I mean, it was nice to have the cyclone going so you can just kind of run around and do whatever the heck you felt like. So that came in handy. Hmm. What are we going to call this replay, guys? I have an idea. How about Visible Menace? I like that. Why Visible? Well, because Hidden Menace, he, and obviously he's not really hidden that much. So visible Menace. Because Hidden Menace was already taken? <laughs> Duh. I like your target priority, though. I mean, go for the destroyers first. You did that. Um, Mid-game, I think there could have been some differences in choices. We talked about that. I think if he wants to run Hidden Menace, he needs to pre-drop a little bit more aggressively early game to conserve planes. And But I think Big O even discovered that towards the end of the game. He started pre-dropping a little bit more. I'm, so. I'm quite frankly surprised because he plays so much CVs mm -hmm. that he even took the skill. Hmm. Oh, maybe he's experimenting with it. Nothing wrong with that. Try new things out, you know? Could be. Either way, it's a nice game. Um, I can understand why Big O sent that one in and wanted me to use Cover My Replay on it, so... Thanks, Big O, for doing that. Cool. All right, well, let's go ahead then and